realize that you can't hear me, but you can hear me now. Um, that is live tech for you. So hello everyone and welcome to Adobe Live APAC. So before we start, of course, we'd like to acknowledge the traditional owners of the land on which we live, create and learn on today, paying respects to elders past, present and emerging. And as you can see, we are here once again with the lovely Sophie Eleanor. How are you doing today, Sophie? I'm very good. Very excited to be here. How are you doing? I'm doing good. Yeah, a lot of a lot of stuff happening behind the scenes, but um, it seems like everything is working. So chat and everyone tuning in, please, please let us know how we're doing. Um, and um, let's get this show on the road, I guess. <laughs> awesome. Let's do it. So today I just want to do a bit of a disclaimer. The 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 promo and the the thumbnail for this stream has been using after effects and we will be using after effects um but actually we'll be using a lot of photoshop and actually predominantly photoshop um we had to prepare these assets a little bit ahead of time because our wonderful host and colleague flynn flynn tracy is expecting um a baby hopefully today fingers crossed um and so we had to just get ready a little bit ahead of time and um that means that we are actually using more of photoshop today but you wouldn't know that until just now um but it's that's very sweet good. of you to take the fall on that front and not throw me under the bus <laughs> yeah really, like, deciding like, uh, two seconds joanna beforehand. can handle it it's all good <laughs> um but hello hello also gareth and kim in chat welcome welcome um how about without much further ado we go into some example work to get us started yeah so as you said we will do will we be doing like a little bit of after effects but i thought for something a bit different and for something that i think is very fun we would focus a bit more this week on some stop motion animation and there's lots of different ways you can do stop motion but my personal preference is to do it in photoshop um I guess we'll probably discuss the reasons why I think that's like a, a really useful and powerful tool for that as we get into it a little bit more. But I thought, yeah, maybe a good place to start would be to have a look at a couple of um, example works in the kind of style that we're going to be playing around with this week. So um, this little mixed media guy here is one I whipped up on the weekends. So I thought maybe I should test this before I try and do a live <laughs> stream on it. Um, so. Yeah, this, this is just cut out of paper that I had in my scrap drawer at home. Um, those are my hands. And it's really just, um, yeah, kind of playing around with the physical and the digital, like tangible um, actual objects and then sort of 2D animation on top of it. Um, so this is something I've kind of been playing around with a little bit in my just for fun time and I, yeah, I just feel like it's a really fun space to play in mixing that kind of um, analog and digital medium together. Mm. I just feel like when you layer those different techniques, it, it just, I don't know, brings something else to the party a little bit. Um, so there's a few different examples that I've done um, over the last little while. Again, lots using my hands. This kind of feels like a bit of a theme that I didn't realize I was doing intentionally. <laughs> um, and, and another theme is just like kind of cheap and cheerful craft supplies. So I just have like drawers full of pom-poms and rhinestones, and googly eyes mm. and that kind of thing as you yeah. do. Um, and for small scale stop motions, I find those, those things that are really small that you have lots of work really, really well. Um, you can kind of get lots of, lots of different movements in it. Um, yeah. So that's that's kind of the, the space we're going to be playing in today. It's it's really fun, and I think probably the biggest thing that I want to sort of impart with this is that you don't need heaps of fancy equipment to do this kind mm -hmm. of thing. Like it's, I feel like maybe some people think that there's a bit of a barrier to um, to kind of getting into stop motion that maybe you need like a really expensive camera and lighting and I don't know just have to drop tons of dollars on this. You really don't. Um, yeah, again, I, you can have $5 worth of craft supplies and make something really fun. Um, I thought just 
just for um, comparison, I would show you a couple of stop motions where I did have a professional photographer in a studio and, and proper lighting. Mm -hmm. So this is, this is an example of that where um, I worked with uh, a really dear friend of mine, Zoe Lonigan, who's an exceptional photographer. Um, you should check out her work. She just does the most beautiful, rich, like colorful work that's just lovely. Um, but I work with her a lot um, when I do want to go into that more upscale, have actual lights, have a studio kind of end of things. Um, but you can kind of tell that this is way bigger scale compared to, um, you know, for example, this something the size of an A4 sheet of paper versus yeah. these are my legs that I painted orange kind of I thing. I was going to say, you could do like <laughs> scale alone, like first we have hands yeah. and now we have legs for days so yeah yeah yeah, yeah. This one <laughs> that's is how actually... i tell scale, scale now is, is it hands or is it legs <laughs> um yeah this this we actually had to shoot upside down because i had to lie on my back and like do this with my legs to and then we had to flip it it was like yeah a bit of a bit of a circus but so much fun and actually that's probably another theme is the the reverse engineering that is kind of involved in in stop motion mm -hmm. um i think once you kind of realize that basically you just do stuff backwards it takes a lot of the sort of trickiness out of it mm. um this is another one zoe and i did together um again she had her professional lights she had her very fancy camera beautiful um again this is this is a fair bit bigger in scale compared to the smaller things that I will do with, with no lighting and, you know, nothing fancy. Mm. Um, but I think kind of seeing them next to each other, you can kind of, you know, like there's still, I still think there's that this is like pretty high quality considering, um, Absolutely. yeah, considering that it's done on a dime, I, I guess. Yeah. And, and so. let's also acknowledge that it was done on the weekend, sort of in a short <laughs> amount of time, like the, in the a deadline <laughs> was was tight on this one. So yeah, we were just yeah. saying before the stream started, like it's it's really important, uh, or I think at least it's very important to to just show how accessible making things can be. That you don't yeah. need um, a trillion dollar lights. I know maybe they don't cost that much, but we're speaking with hope here. Um, if you really... round up to the nearest trillion, exactly. it probably is a trillion. So, you know. But yeah, like you, you can use the most um, sort of air quotes, basic materials and, and still um, in spite of or because of create really, really cool work. So I love that we are really highlighting yeah, that yeah. today. Yeah, I think when you, it's it's kind of like a restricted palette, right? When you've got a restricted budget, you're like, well, how can I, what can I do in this limited space that I have? Like, how can I be creative in this very small sort of um, realm? So, mm -hmm. yeah, I think that's, I think that's something really exciting. And um, yeah, so let's, shall we make something? Should we make something now? I think so. <laughs> I think it's time to make something. Happy days. All right. So I'm gonna I'm gonna start over in Illustrator. Um, this is where I will start pretty much any project because um, I'm the person that likes to have a plan when I'm doing something. And mm -hmm. really, <laughs> I consider I can this. Tell. <laughs> yeah, no, no, I know. It's very, very that type of person. Um, I find it just really useful to be able to, in a storyboard capacity and in a pre-production kind of way, just sort of lay out exactly um, what I want the design to be. Um, because this is gonna be uh, made with like paper scraps and craft and things, I didn't sort of worry about mocking up colors on here. I'm just kind of trying to nut out the, like trying to lay out the, um, the shapes and sort of the, the shapes, the scale, yeah, just how I want the letters to kind of fit around each other. Um, yeah, basically just the layout, really. <laughs> so my concept for this, um, tickle your fancy is a phrase that tickles my fancy. Um, I just think it's it's lovely, it's cheeky, it's you know, it's kind of a bit old timey. Um, yeah, it just, it just has a bit of whimsy that I mm. find really, um, yeah, I'm drawn to it basically. So 
I'm starting first of all with a phrase that I really love. And then my idea with this is that, well, why don't we tickle it? You know, like, why don't we, we're using hands in our mixed media animation. So why don't I actually have a hand come on and give it a little tickle? And then we can, um, that can be the catalyst for some kind of like magical animation happening. And the magical animation is gonna be these sort of echoing shapes that happen sort of beyond the central lettering. My concept is we're gonna have a hand come on, give it a little tickle, and then we're gonna go like with the colors. Yep. Like yep. My <laughs> That's exactly it. Yep. You're picking up what I'm putting down. That's great. So this is this is as far as I went in Illustrator. I'm like, I don't need to do colors. What I need to do actually is go through my craft drawer and see what I have on hand because mm -hmm. I don't want to have to go and buy something. I've got heaps of scraps in there. Let's have a look at what I've got in there. So then I picked out some papers. <laughs> ooh, ooh, ooh. Not just any papers. We've got glitter paper. We've got yeah. colored paper. Yeah. Wowza. Um, yep. Before we get into this, though, I just want to quickly let chat know if you have any questions about anything that we're covering today, whether it is, you know, advice on paper selection or, mm. or anything to do with um, stop motion animation or anything like that, please feel free to ask your questions in the Behance chat. Um, so if you're tuning in on YouTube, please hop on over to behance.net slash live because that's the chat that I will be monitoring and getting um, questions from you today um so yes um bilal will be we will be and we are talking about collage animation stop motion style and annette thank you also for your wonderful um acknowledgement of country um as well but sophie take it away yes so i i picked out these papers i'm like these are some colors that are speaking to me let's see what we've got and i kind of just laid a few different options out now normally i love uh to go in rainbow order <laughs> um but i As thought with this that's, that's, yeah that's no, the I know. industry standard <laughs> but i looking at this layout on the left here i was like i actually kind of like how we've got the warm and the cool kind of the higher contrast the opposite ends of the mm. the spectrum kind of clashing almost against each other so let's just let's lean into the the color clashing um direction and mm. that's this is sort of the color palette that I've decided to go down. So from there, um, I spent most of Saturday night <laughs> cutting out by hand with a pair of scissors, all of these different bits and pieces from my um, initial illustrator layout. Um, and then and then Sunday morning, rolling a thousand tiny little pieces of blue tack into balls <laughs> to, um, to prep the actual artwork that we'll be shooting so a bit of time involved in that but it's i don't know there's something quite therapeutic about doing you know very um tactile repetitive tasks i don't know there's something that's mm. quite calming except when you have a looming deadline about <laughs> those types of tasks so once you've got it all layered up this is kind of where it was sitting and i think the really fun thing about um doing a stop motion is even if the animation turns out a bit rubbish you've got a tangible artwork at the end mm. either way right so i've i've got all my like little pieces of oh there it is um of cut out paper Do you want to put it I'm, slightly closer to the camera oh there i'm gonna go. i'm gonna pretend like i'm in one of those makeup youtube videos yeah and, like, do like, this <laughs> but yeah, you can see it's all just, you know, it's literally held together with bits of blue tack. Mm. It's very low brow. There's nothing like, you know, I just bought the blue tack at the grocery store. It's not, it's not like super fancy, very exclusive like adhesive premium, or anything. Yeah, no, tack. it's run of the mill. Um, yeah, blue tack. So this is, this is kind of how I've built my layers up. And then, um, yeah, then. I'm going to show you my extremely high tech photography setup. It's not high tech at all. <laughs> it's, it's a tripod and a camera and that's it. So um, this is my bedroom floor just over here. Um, and I have masking taped my backgrounds to the floor. 
Um, yeah, it's, I think probably the most expensive thing here is the tripod, but honestly okay. you could, you could probably stick your iPhone to a ruler mm. or sit it on a stool or something like, yes, we've all done it. <laughs> yeah. Oh my gosh. Absolutely. Um, the camera that I'm using is like, I don't know, it's like 10 years old now. It's mm. probably the camera on my phone is better than my actual DSLR camera at this point. Um, so yeah, the, I think the most important thing with any stop motion is to try and, um, limit the amount of movement. So you want as few variables as possible, right? So the thing you're animating should be the only thing that's moving. Hence mm. why I've stuck the background down. I'm like, I don't want that to move. I've locked the tripod so that the camera is not moving. So in theory, the only thing that's moving is the paper when I physically like move it around on the page. Um, I did hit a few hiccups with that, but we'll get to that as I, <laughs> as I show you the photos. Cliffhanger. Um, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Stay tuned. Um, so one of the things that I realized is in order to do the animation the way that I want, where we're starting with the tickle your fancy lettering and then building outwards, is that in, in order to do that, I kind of have to move the whole artwork every time that I want to add a layer. Mm -hmm. So it's not ideal for stop motion, but I'm hoping that we can kind of um, mask a fair bit of that once we get into Photoshop. But one of the one of the very sort of low tech ways that I tried to mitigate that is well if I if I kind of just draw a bit of a faint pencil outline around where my hero lettering is, mm -hmm. then I can try and line it up as I'm going, um, and then I can just sort of Photoshop this pencil outline out once I once I get to the sort of editing phase. Mm -hmm. um, and the other. <laughs> The other very low tech thing that I tried to do is, well, I can't see that pencil outline once I start layering the, the, um, the backgrounds underneath mm. it, but maybe I can kind of say, well, this string has to reach across here and the, the top of the K and the top of the E should kind of roughly hit mm. that string. I mean, you're, um, you're basically creating uh, like layer guides, but in the yeah. physical realm. <laughs> Just Thank you. This. That's exactly right. <laughs> <laughs> I've created some physical layer guides. Thank mm. you. Now I feel more sophisticated because I just you're masking tape some string to the ground. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, that's that's kind of my setup. So it's really it's a bunch of scrap pieces of paper. It's some masking tape. It's some mm. string. And um, again, I don't have lighting, but what I will try and do if I know I'm going to be doing a stop motion shoot is kind of try and limit it to the middle hours of the day. Mm. If I'm, if I know I'm going to be using natural daylight, then I kind of want it to be as steady as possible. Um, if it's a cloudy day, that can throw a real spanner in the works because you mm. might shoot one photo and then two seconds later, it's now three like shades darker. <laughs> You're like, uh-oh. Surprise. <laughs> um, so, yeah, either either a no cloudy day or a very, very cloudy day where it's mm. going to be uniform light. Mm. But, I mean, even then, I had lots of variation in the lighting here, but we can kind of fix a lot of that in Photoshop once we get to it. So swings and roundabouts. You can, yeah. you can spend, I don't know, 10 grand getting some really fancy lighting equipment that will override the natural daylight and then you can shoot whenever, or mm. you can spend a few hours in Photoshop at the other side of the process and kind of clean up the mess a little bit. Yeah. And, um, and these are, you know, these are important things to consider in the, the, the pre-production phase. So, you know, mm. like, okay, where, where can I either afford to, or where am I able to um, make this, you know, process easier? Or where can I um, maybe take some genius shortcuts? Um, mm. Or really like, okay, so I know I need to shoot within this time. So then this needs to be like, all this then needs to be done ahead of time. So I think being aware of like embracing the the I guess the constraints and limitations mm. of the medium that you're using um, can be really uh, like 
creatively fulfilling because then you can push those limits um, mm. and come up with, you know, genius solutions such as the masking tape and string <laughs> as leg guides. <laughs> Yeah, and I think the more you kind of do this, the craftier you get because mm. you will be like, well, last time I did this and that didn't work. So next time, you know, next time I'm going to control the weather and I won't have clouds. And just well, use my that, psychic but... powers to control yeah, the yeah, weather. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, yeah, that's that's kind of the, the photography and the pre-production mm. and the sketching and all that sort of thing. So there's, it is quite a long process before you can kind of get to the, okay, now I'm ready to edit mm. phase of things. Um, but I think I think it's really quite accessible. Like, I don't think any of it is particularly difficult. It takes a bit of time. Mm. Like, I would say, you know, it's a, it's a bit of a, like, a long distance kind of stamina. Marathon. That's it's a marathon. Script. Yeah, yeah. You kind of, you kind of just got to be like, okay, well, it, you know, it's a bit repetitive. It's a bit time consuming, but at the end of it, we're going to have something that's really fun and really, um, yeah, really unique, I would say as well. Mm. So I took all my photos with my very fancy camera setup. Um, I took more photos than I knew that I would need just because, you know, you've gone to all the trouble of getting everything cut out and set up. You may as well just take extra just in case. Mm. Um, so I've got you know, heaps and heaps of different um, different photos here. This is me tickling the letter. <laughs> How many different, like, ways of tickling the lettering did you have to try out I... before you found, like, the one? <laughs> I'll be honest, I did three, three sets of oh. tickling. Yeah. There you go. And I really was doing it, as you kind of said, to, like, oh, is this going to be better? Is that going to be better? Mm. But I think in the end I might use all three. Ooh. I have an idea. Yeah, I have a bit of an idea, but but maybe let's jump into Photoshop first because um, this is this is the kind of meaty part of it where mm. we can actually let's do it. get stuck in and yeah. So of my I don't know two hundred plus photos that I took, I've picked about I don't know fifty or sixty that I'm going to bring into Photoshop, and I'm going to do that all in one go um, with this very handsy uh, very. Um, handy load files into stack um, function and so the way we do that is we just browse to where our images are uh, um, so I've got my little selection here I'm just going to mm -hmm. grab everything all at once and we're just going to kind of let that tick along for a minute and it's just going to bring every single image in the order that I took them and oh, just wow. dump them in one go. Um, Fantastic. Yeah, this is a real time saver, this one. Um, While that that'll... Um, finishes loading all the photos, just want to say hello to RB as well. Welcome, welcome. A long time no see. Um, and again, to remind uh, you in the chat, if you have any questions about what we're doing, uh, comments or just general thoughts, um, feel free to post them in the chat and uh, we will get to as many of them as we can. And um, if you scroll up uh, from earlier on, I did also post a link to Zoe and uh, to their website and um, have a look in the chat because I'll be posting a couple more links for, for Sophie um, as well as we go along. Um, but last question before we go go into this, I noticed that you you shoot in raw. Uh, I mean, that's that's generally a, a great um, sort of industry standard practice. But is that something that you found has like a massive benefit now to the to the editing phase, or is that just second um, nature now to always shoot in raw? Um, sometimes I do, and sometimes I don't. I think if I if I know I'm just doing you know a thing for Instagram that's only ever going to be this big, mm. then it's kind of I'm just packing extra baggage that I'm not going to be using. Um, there's just never going to be enough pixels to be able to see the difference that that would make. Yeah. So, and I think with stop motion too, especially because we've got I don't know sixty odd images in one single Photoshop file now the file size will beef up really quickly if we've mm. got, you know, some like beefy, heavy um, file sizes. 
So it's kind of, yeah, I think if you know it's going to be, you know, maybe for, um, I don't know, a TVC or some kind of ad that's going to be shown on a bigger screen, then there's benefits to that. Um, but yeah, I think I think for this one, we don't really need to, you know, this is, this is just for fun. We're just doing yeah. this for fun. It's not going to be shown on an IMAX theatre screen. Not yet. Or will it? <laughs> this is not I'll be kicking myself. <laughs> um, so, yeah, it's, it's again just kind of, uh, I guess, thinking about what the output is going to be mm. at the beginning of the project and, and thinking, well, am I going to... Am I going to kick myself if I've gone through all this effort um, and then not be able to export something really high res at the end of it? Mm. So yeah, it's just just a bit of a weighing up what's going to be um, most valuable at the end versus most <laughs> painful in the process, mm. I suppose. Um, so we're going to, before we even do anything, I think we're just going to crop this to square because we actually don't need all this stuff that's on the edges. This is just kind of dead space to me. So we're going to bring this in nice and tight. Um, Fantastic. And, and that's a great note also, like when you're um, setting things up to make sure that, I mean, in print, you would have the bleed uh, to make sure that when you cut the paper that you don't get sort of white trims uh, on the yeah. end or anything like that. But when you're setting up your your space to shoot your, your animation to make sure that you've got plenty of, of sort of uh, clear space or wiggle room um, yeah. where your yeah. what you're shooting can either move over there or when you sort of crop and resize that you have like image to crop and resize um, yeah so that's a great point and, and, so and quick, the other quick question um, before from Kim um, where is that load file stack prompt oh so it's file scripts load files into stack fantastic yeah that's i use this all the time it's such a handy um such a handy like feature to have um but yeah on on the cropping thing i never will delete crop pixels mm. like e even though i'm cropping the the sort of canvas um unless i'm really really you know three thousand percent sure that i'm never gonna have to nudge or shrink or anything like that um just to be on the safe side, I will just always leave that unchecked because, um, yeah, it's just just more um, margin for error, I guess. Um, so now we've cropped it to our square and we've got that sitting pretty nicely, I reckon. Um, now the fun bit is, Ooh. I'm just going <laughs> to, it's all the fun bit. What am I talking yeah. about? Um, we've got a little prompt down the bottom of our page saying create video timeline and that's what we want to do. So straight away, um, we've now got this, uh, quite lengthy mm. and quite, <laughs> quite, um, we've got quite a few layers in there. What I want to do is I'm just scrubbing like three frames in my little timeline there and I'm highlighting everything and I'm just going to chop everything um, and again this is a little bit of a time consuming process here but we'll smash through it the reason um, I've chosen three frames is really um, more just out of practice mm -hmm. so I've kind of found that uh, so my composition is uh, 30 frames per second and so if each sort of frame is three seconds long. That means I get 10 images per second. Mm -hmm. I think that, I think that maths is. Yeah, it sounds um, about right. <laughs> three times, three times 10 is 30, right? Yes. <laughs> um, so. And speaking of time, just to heads up that we have um, around 20, 25 minutes um, Beautiful. left. Um, so just a note of that. Lovely. Because time does fly when we're having so much fun, <laughs> which I feel like yes, I'm, I'm saying that every stream, but it's true. We have a lot of fun here. <laughs> <laughs> so now that, now that I've just got a little slice of each image, so three frames long and we've got our timeline here, um, I'm going to just one by one go and offset these 
just so that I can look at them one at a time. Mm. Um, and I'm just and using that's again by the... three, three seconds, right? Or three frames? Three, three frames, yeah. Um, and this is, um, this is kind of the very first, once you finish this process, this is the very first sort of instance where you'd be like, oh, I can see the it animation. Like, like it's actually going to start moving. This might be yeah. something. Or if you've done something horribly wrong, <laughs> the mm. part where you're like, uh oh. <laughs> um, this is like the great moment of truth in uh, the stop animation. Yeah, yeah. But it's, it, I, I don't know, this is kind of my favorite part of the thing because you've put in, you know, hours and hours in the pre-production and whatnot. Mm. And this is sort of your first little glimpse of, well, this might've actually worked. We might be onto something here. And that's that's a really motivating and exciting little, um, little glimmer. Yeah, a little boost of uh, dopamine through the creative process. <laughs> Absolutely. So I think, um, the reason I've got so many files here is because I think I've imported all three um, tickles, ah. which might we might not actually um, get through all today, but <laughs> okay. So already I'm seeing a bit of a problem where this frame is mm. not lining up. We've got a bit of a jump between here and here, mm. but let's just have a look at if I bring this guy down. Ooh. Okay, oh, we've got something. We've got something happening. There's something happening there. It's very jumping all over the place because uh, because I had to move everything mm. physically as we were going along. So there's a bit of a, a bit of an issue there. And would you deliberately, yeah. I mean, as you're going through, kind of retain a little bit of that, like, uh, jankiness, so to speak, to make it, yeah. to remind people that this is actual paper um, and I made this with my hands? Or is your goal uh, more so to sort of make it as, um, as sort of picture perfect as possible? I think that's a really interesting point where sometimes a stop motion can be too perfect where you look at it and you don't even realize that it's a stop motion. Mm. Like if you're looking at it and you're thinking, oh yeah, someone's done that digitally, then I feel like the the heart of all that tangible work is kind of lost a little bit. Mm. So it's interesting you say that, do you retain some of that sort of bumpiness on purpose? I think, I think yes, sometimes, because um, that's its charm, right? There's a mm. little bit of, we made this in real life, it's not totally perfect. And it also, um, I think, makes it a really forgiving medium too because it doesn't have to be, you know, absolutely, absolutely. pristine, totally perfect. <laughs> We're so insane. Same brain, same brain. <laughs> um, that being said, I think we can tidy this up a little mm. bit. And what I might actually do before we even get into that is I'm going to... So I think, I think all of my frames leading up to this point where I get the colored background wow, yeah. are sitting in the same position. Impressively so, so. Well, I didn't move anything then. So <laughs> that was, I would have been concerned if it wasn't because I like didn't touch it. Um, but let's just quickly, if I extend this top guy over the top of here and then maybe just knock the opacity down so I can kind of see both at once. Oh, there you go. Kind of a, a faux onion skin. Uh, yeah, so to totally. Yep. Um, what we might do is grab that and everything above it and just kind of just see if we can. Nice. And uh, we've got a great question here from Rachel. Welcome, Rachel, also to the stream. Um, and I think we might have just given an answer in a way. Um, so the question is, is there a reason to use a timeline over the frame by frame animation? Ooh, the frame by frame animation in Photoshop? 
Yes, yeah, so obviously on... with with um with Photoshop and animating you can choose either to do it like the timeline, like the video timeline, and then mm. you can also do it like one frame is one layer. Um so I'm imagining that doing it this uh... way you can more easily adjust sort of the um, the duration and you can also more easily um, sort of kind of spot mistakes and make adjustments to the sort of the composition as a whole as opposed yeah. to focusing on the individual layers yeah I um I've not done the other method too much mm-hmm. um again like I said like with with stop motion as with pretty much any kind of creative thing there's a thousand different ways to do any given mm-hmm. task and it's it's kind of just like what is comfortable and um makes the most sense to you I like keeping them this way because often I will, um, I might repeat frames. So, you know, in this last section where we've got our colored paper, I actually want to duplicate so it it radiates out and then comes back in. And so when I've got my frames set up this way, I can just copy and paste and then manually move them so that we've got a kind of uh, almost like a boomerang sort of uh, effect. So I think it's I think it's just about the level of control that I have with this method where I can I can repeat frames or if there's a dud in there I can just delete it out or if something is moving too quickly or too short uh, sorry too quickly or too long then I can I can adjust mm. um, in that way so fantastic question too I think um, that was a great spot Um, um, pick up rather pick up on on that we're using one of the two animation animation methods um but yeah if anyone yeah. else has, has questions once again feel free to just uh, shoot them through and we'll we'll get to them um, as we can so what i'm just gonna do now is now that i've got my little faux onion skin i might just go through this and i'm just nudging with my keys, you can already see that it's not really lining up in, like I might have to do a bit of rotation Mm. on some of these to get it um, sitting in the correct spot. Oops. Um, But we've got a lot of... um, Pardon me, I'm not sure if you can hear that, but my tummy, <laughs> my tummy is hungry. <laughs> I wonder what that little gurgle was. Yeah, no, she's, uh, she's very it's expressive. Lunch, it's lunchtime, I get it, it's fine. <laughs> um, gosh, we're kind of, we're kind of moving all over the place with this one. I did not line this up terribly well when I was shooting it. But the beauty of doing it this way is that we can we can be really um, oops, targeted with um, the layers that we're moving around. Mm. Yeah, and it's, it's great that you've extended sort of the previous um, sort of perfect layer all the way through um, and yeah. really speeding up the excuse me the the adjustment um process and it's also again so so cool to see because just as equally as you're lining up everything you can also then very deliberately say okay well this is how i want this one to maybe you know duck a bit that way or um you you have so so much control over how yeah perfect something looks so to speak although I don't necessarily enjoy using the word um <laughs> perfect but yeah you can you can see how how um it's you can just different. be really targeted like mm, yeah it's, targeted um, and deliberate that's better yeah yeah you can be what well, how about intentional is that Ooh, <laughs> nice <laughs> um Let's let's actually reverse this now so we can have a look at what um, our little radiating out situation is going to be. So we're going to go from here to here. See, now, now Ooh, this is Ooh, there we like go. Something. Now we're talking. Yeah, 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 yeah. There's always like a brief moment of panic where I'm like, oh, have I, did I miss a step? Have I forgotten something? But never. 
<laughs> well, sometimes, but <laughs> sometimes a little bit, maybe. <laughs> um, but it's great, like that. Doing it this way, um, the process is is so forgiving, and the the combination yeah. of of traditional or sort of physical mediums into the digital realm really does give you the best of both worlds um in my yeah. opinion because it's it's so rewarding to make something with your hands and then you know refine it and polish it uh or just sort of being intentional and and putting it together in, yeah. in photoshop or um any other program is is great um and yeah, you can kind you can kind of go as far as you want with this in terms of well, how how perfect do I want to get with it? Do I want to mm. fully airbrush the background out and and have it completely flat, or do I want to retain some of that paper texture? Does the lighting change too much? That kind of thing. I'm just gonna do a little. Whoa! Oh, look at that! Oh, we did it! <laughs> I mean, you did it, but yay! <laughs> we did it! We did it! It was a group effort. Oh wow! Um, this is this is certainly tickling my fancy. Uh, right? I will say, <laughs> so much fun. And while while we're here, let's let's just do the reverse so that we've got, um, so that we're returning to our kind of, mm -hmm. um, little boomerang situation. Um, yes, yes. Now we don't need this guy, but we can bring him back here um what i would like this is kind of the star of the show this little um colors radiating in my mind yeah. i'm picturing this actually being quite a brief part of the overall animation like i want the tickling to kind of take a little while mm. you know maybe maybe one tickle happens and um we only get a small reaction like maybe that's where we can build in our um 2d animation we could have i don't know some some sort of sparkles or something Maybe the second tickle happens again, nothing. And then we tickle the, we, yeah, like that's not my ticklish spot. That's not it either. But then we get the <laughs> third one and we're like, whoa. <laughs> <laughs> but that's, that, I feel like that's kind of the narrative that we're going mm. for. And on that, actually, I would love if anyone has some suggestions on what our sort of mini reactions could be that can sit alongside this. Ooh. So if we look back at um, this guy, you know, I'm thinking these sorts of like little radiating lines mm. or the little sort of fizzy bubbles or the the stars, that kind of thing. Like what um what might be something fun that we can we can sort of layer into Excellent. Yep. Chat, let us know what kind of uh uh sprinkles and sparkles we can, we yes. can add into this and um, <laughs> I'll make a note of it for for our part two, because we do have let's see if my math is right we have a little over 10 minutes um beautiful left to go so we're right on time i think um Excellent. but it's it's great you know and i think i've said it's great like five times this week but <laughs> truly I'm, I'm having a blast um that you now also you know can find ways to actually tell a story uh where yeah oh is, yeah. is the letters are the letters reacting um a little bit like later are they essentially yeah you, you can make a story um with just some movable letters and i think that is is wonderful i think that's i mean that's my whole um my whole reason for getting into like lettering and animation is is that exactly like that's at the heart of everything it's like how can we tell a story with again, this restricted palette of just letter forms and, you know, a little bit of movement. And I think, um, I'm not really sure what this story is, why, why, why we're like going on this journey with the tickle your fancy letters to discover where exactly they are ticklish and what reaction we get when we tickle them in different places. But I don't know. I'm here for it now that we. I'm. I'm invested in this narrative now that we've come this far. Absolutely. We need to know why are the letters being tickled and who is yes. tickling them. <laughs> it's important. We must get to the bottom of this. Um, but like, even just looking at this like radiating color that we've got, like this alone is a pretty fun little loop. This yeah. kind of. Um, it's almost like the opposite of those. You know, those like calming inhale exhale mm. videos. This feels oh, like. Yeah. 
I'm gonna give you an epileptic fit. Kind of. It's like that. But this fun. is a seizure-inducing. <laughs> oh no! Um, mindfulness. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. But but speaking of of lettering, because you you spoke about it briefly so fondly, I will actually also post a link to your Adobe Max talk um, yes. in the chat. So everyone, please please check that out after the stream because we are wrapping up shortly um we've got some ideas from the from the chat too so gareth gareth is saying snow you could use one of the particle generators in after effects Ooh, interesting okay um uh, from kim we have some sort of rays radiating out with the letters i think that's also excellent yeah nice I and then gareth that. once again moving lines like along a path around the outside yeah interesting i so like maybe that that's like, I like tracing that. And sort of, mm. you know, this well, kind the of nifty, stuff. The nifty thing is, because I've already done this, because I'm a, mm -hmm. an over planner, and I've already started in Illustrator, I actually have my letter forms in vector mode here. So go. taking it, yeah, doing that kind of thing in Illustrate, uh, sorry, After Effects will actually work quite well. Mm -hmm. But I just want to see if I can really quickly, before we wrap up today, just do one other little element of this, um, mm -hmm. tickle your fancy. And this is something I stumbled across uh, by accident in a previous um, stop motion exploration. But let me zoom in on these letters here. So I took a bunch of photos of just this lettering on just the plain background. Mm -hmm. And because I was using natural light and not um, you know, studio lights or anything, what I discovered is if I move my body around, like if I'm walking around the canvas, it changes the lighting just subtly enough mm. that the glitter will pick up different. Yeah. Oh, and so wow. this is this is something I'm really interested in, in with the sort of tangible stop motion stuff is how can I how can I bring, you know, the texture and the lighting and those sorts of things with physical objects that I would really struggle to do in a 2D space. Mm. And this this was a really happy accident that I discovered where it's like, well, I'm actually not really moving anything, but I've got this really, um, really whimsical little yeah. glimmer happening just because of um, my <laughs> cheapskate method of not using lights. <laughs> well, you know, again, like I, I think it's just using what you have to great effect it's you know creating space for these happy little accidents to happen and yeah instead of being like um well instead of being in the mindset of i only have this uh moving then to the mindset of like okay i have this now what yeah, can what's I the do benefit yeah exactly and this was totally one of those situations um because my camera is kind of locked and these letters aren't moving, what I'm going to really quickly do here is group these. And instead of um, one by one going and masking each thing, I'm just going to mask the whole thing at once. Um, because I'm just going to super quickly, if I can, show you. Um, I have about five, just, uh, just a little over five minutes. Okay, I reckon we can do it in that time or we can at least start it. Um, I'm just going to eyedropper a color mm -hmm. from my background and I've sat a new layer underneath the group that I've created, Oops, which we can't see because the group's on top. Um, and we're just going to really quickly paint in a little background. This is, this is for if I want a really flat colored background because at the mm -hmm. moment we've got a little bit of um, variation. Mm -hmm. And now what I can do is actually just go, I'm not sure if you're able to even see the change that that's making a but little it's bit, yeah yeah it's if I turn that off you can just see I'm painting away the background because these letters aren't moving so I've got that locked mm. and if we zoom right in you can kind of see the pencil um the pencil outline that I had to do yeah. in order to <laughs> um to get this sitting roughly in the same position so this, this right here is actually the kind of super time consuming part of this process. But mm. this is the bit where I'm like, well, Photoshop is actually gonna really, um, really help me out here in terms of taking this from, you know, a sort of crafty beginners thing to something that's, that's polished and mm. um, 
you know, the, the attention to detail kind of thing. Um, and I found that even when I have used, um, you know, the really expensive lighting equipment and that kind of thing, I, I do still end up having to do this process quite a bit yeah. just because when you're lighting really large surfaces, it's, you know, it's kind of impossible to, um, to get a uniform light across the whole surface. Mm. And, you know, so sometimes I, there's particles or flies yeah, or whatever exactly. that somehow make it onto the canvas uh exactly which obviously is not ideal um so yeah i i kind of like that there's there's always some aspects of it that are inescapable uh no matter sort of how fancy your your equipment yeah. is yeah and i'm 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 being quite messy because i'm sort of rushing this a little bit here but i can go back and and paint this back in i'm just trying mm. to sort of smooth um that kind of transition between the actual paper background and mm. um my flat painted background mm. because I do still want to retain those shadows that's really important to me because it's that whole thing of well why would we do the stop motion if we're just gonna you know make it totally perfect yeah but I've found that this this little process here of just going in and just kind of tidying this up a little bit makes the world of difference. Like I can really see it when I in when I look back at my old work where I didn't used to do this kind of mm. thing. And I'm like, it just looks a bit, it's just a bit messy. It's just a bit, I don't know. More it messy could be than intentional, I suppose. We actually yeah. we have a great questioner, and I think this might this will have to be our last question. Um, but from Gareth, would it be possible to take the photos on a chroma, green or blue background? Yes, Tommy. Um, we're having lunch soon. Uh, sorry. So would it be possible to take the photos on a chroma, green or blue background and then use keying to change the background? Yeah. Yep. That's totally another another process you could do. I have tried that in the past um, with limited effects because I, I don't have like a proper green screen or anything like that. Um, but that that is also like a really um, a really valuable time saver if that's you know if you've got that set up and you're familiar with using that process mm. um, yeah that's that's absolutely something that you could do I'm just I'm just now painting back in those sort of little areas where I went a bit too far mm. with my um, with my mask and already and you know you can you can see even just the difference with the ones that you've that you've sort of repaired, I guess. Um, yeah, yeah. How how much they also now pop because the, yeah. the background is a bit more solid and and of course we are we are short for time, um, so this is still going to be a little a little bit um, uh, messy and rushed. But um, I think we can clearly see you know the effect that just this one simple step um, does in in sort of refining refining the piece so if we kind of compare it from that to that mm. you know we've got we've got quite a bit of grain in our background the lighting changes a little mm. bit but now that I've got this mask it just is like it's just cleaner I really love a flat color background I'm not super big into things with lots of gradients and that kind of thing although obviously the shadows here mm. uh, are really telling the story um, and of course, you could add in like vague shadow also on top of the flat yeah, if you yep. wanted to. Yeah, I mean, whatever your you know, whatever your Photoshop kind of thing is, because we're working in this program now, you can you know you can add adjustment layers. You can, I don't know, add in other images and things if you want. Like you can, you can really take this in a lot of different directions. Mm. But yeah, I think we're gonna have our tickling happen. We're going to have our little glitter and then we're going to have our crazy, like, whoo, party Fantastic. of a... Love, yeah. it, love it, love it. It's so good. Um, sadly, this is all we have time for today, um, but it's been an absolute pleasure um, having you on. And I'm very excited to see um, what we get up to in part two, which is happening mm -hmm. shortly. Um, so on Thursday, same time, same place, we'll be back and doing some animating in uh, After Effects, adding some 2D animation to this as well. Um, so yes. once again, thank you everyone. Thank you everyone. 
for tuning in. And thank you, Sophie. I hope you have My a wonderful pleasure. day. Yeah, you too. We'll see you on Thursday. See everyone on Thursday. Bye-bye. Thank you.